Today on Experts Showcase, Penny Zenker, productivity expert, taking you into the productivity zone. And Penny, welcome to Experts Showcase. We're so glad to have you as today's expert with this really important topic, productivity, time management, and I think we'll talk about why that's a bad term, right? So tell us a little bit about why uh, what, we're, what we're talking about in today's episode. Hi, Mark. Thanks for having me here. You know, today's episode we are, we're going to talk about the productivity zone. And the reason, you know, I'll, I'll use that term loosely as you did, time management, that's why I like to call it productivity. It's so important today because we live in a, in a world of overstimulation today, people are overwhelmed, frustrated, and, and overloaded. And so, or at least that's the way they feel. And so that's why it's important to understand how do we perform optimally, efficiently, and effectively so that we feel good and we feel productive and, and really, you know, are, are at the top of our game. Absolutely. Excellent. And as we like to do on Expert Showcase, we, we try to break it down to three core uh, bullet points, three keys to success. So I'm just going to review those real quick uh, that we talked about before the show. So we're going to talk about productivity and that it's not time management, it's energy management. Then we're going to get into the 10 core drivers that get you into and keep you into the, this productivity zone. And then we're going to talk about the three time wasters and how you can stay focused on your goals. So this sounds really great. As uh, you know, when we bring Chris on later, you'll find out that this is a, a really important topic for me. So you're going to be my coach and consultant for, for this episode. So let's talk about productivity. It's not about time management. I love that for a lot of reasons, but uh, let's talk about that. All right. Well, I'm, you know, I'll tell you two things about why it's not about time management. First of all, time management is a really broad term, and a lot of people understand it to be different things. Many people think of it as planning and organization, and that's time management. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, is that there's a lot more that go into it. So we need to be able to define specifically what is time management so that we can actually measure it and manage it, right? So that's the, that's the first thing. And secondly, if, if you don't mind me... Uh, yeah, yeah, go, go right ahead. <laughs> is, is that, uh, you know, time is finite. We can't control time. Right, exactly. Right? We think we have this illusion, right, that it's about time. But the fact is it isn't about time because time is finite and we can't control it, so we have to focus on what we can control. And that's the key that I love so much because, you know, I've always hated that term time management because if you try to manage your time, it's incredibly frustrating, right? Because unless you're into some kind of Einsteinian quantum physics or something uh, and can approach the speed of light, that ain't going to happen, right? All we can do is try to organize, uh, you know, somebody once called it sequencing events or event management, not time management, and that was really helpful to me since I'm not necessarily the best time manager in the world, as some people will tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so how do, how do you focus on that? You, you, you say it's energy management. What, what do you mean by energy management? Well, that's right, because it's, you know, a piece of it might be your event management that you talked about, but the fact is, is we all have the same amount of time. So what's the difference between a day where things just go like that, right, and you're just in the flow and you get a ton done, and that day where you're like, oh, where did the time go? Exactly. What is the difference? Help me out here. <laughs> well, you just said it. The difference is the energy. It's how you manage your energy and how much of yourself you bring to that time. So the fact is, it's not about time management, it's about how you manage your personal energy and how you show up for that time is going to make all the difference to what you achieve in that time. And you know, can you give us, uh, can, me personally, I'm going to be very selfish here, can you give us some tips on how to, you know, how to bring that energy? I mean, you know, how do you work with your clients to, to approach this energy question? Right. Bring it. <laughs> <laughs> Just bring it. Bring it. Well, that's the thing, right, is you need to know, okay, what are, the, what are the components? And a lot of times people talk about things, but they don't give you the components. And there are actually four components that make up our energy management. Okay, cool. Right? So the first one, and I'll only be able to touch upon what they are. Obviously, right. it goes a lot deeper. It's the tip of the iceberg kind of thing. But the first one is purpose. And that's tapping into why you're doing something. Mm -hmm. Really understanding the goal and, and the vision there, right? And because that's where the passion and the drive comes from. Does that make right. sense? Yeah, the why, right, that drives you. Right. And that can go down to the big why as well as the why and, and what you're going to do for this hour, mm -hmm. right? So it's, it's, it's at both, uh, both sizes. 
The second thing is the language. It's, it's the, 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 the self-talk that we have. A lot of people are plagued with negative self-talk and yeah. asking ourselves really poor quality questions. So, you know, it, really the way we show up for things, if we've got something to do and we go, oh, I hate this, you think you're going to bring your top energy to your, to your game as you start to do it. No. Right? <laughs> right. Exactly. So, so the third thing is, is a thing that a lot of people think about all the time, which is focus. Mm-hmm. Right, so the other thing is focus. That's my problem. <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, in today's distractions, but there's actually three elements of, of focus. I'm not going to be able to go into that today, but there's a lot more, again, to define specifically what are the things that are going to help you get really laser focused. Excellent. Cool. And you want to know what the fourth thing is? I do. I'm waiting with bated breath here. Well, it's obvious. It's physiology. Okay. Right, because if I gotta not, be breathing, <laughs> you've got to be breathing. But it's more than right. Then that's the funny thing is most of us don't breathe properly when we're under stress. Our breath starts to shorten, and we don't get the same amount of energy and um, you know uh, oxygen that we need. And so we actually get into more of a fight or flight type of thing, so that we're not at our best. That makes great sense. Absolutely. So, so yeah, it's Jane Fonda's "Don't Forget to Breathe," right? We're back to to the age old "Don't Forget to Breathe," but it's also it's the nutrition that we take in. It's how we take care of our body. It's very, well, very cl clearly, we're going to have to have you back to do an entire show episode just on energy management because uh, clearly we could go on for quite a while there. But we're only, as you said, we're only going to be able to hit the highlights there because we want to hit a couple of other highlights here. So let me segue then into. You, you talk about 10 core drivers uh, that people need to you know, tap into to get into this productivity zone. So again, we're not going to have anywhere close to time to get into the 10, so we're, we're, you know, we're basically going to identify them and we're then going to tell people how to get in touch with you if they really want to dig in deep here. Right, right. Well, you already heard four of them, so that's okay. Cool. Okay, so the, the, those four points are part of the ten drivers. Okay, they are because that would be really mean for me to throw another, you know. Because then it would be fourteen. Yeah, that would be really right. kind of, you know, that's yeah. But then we're all confused, right? You're so pushing now, it at fourteen. You're just asking a lot of me. <laughs> that's right. Ten is pushing it already. All right, so we got that's six right. more to go. <laughs> You've already heard four, and that's part of championship psychology, right? I group them right. to make it a little bit easier. So that energy management is also it's our mindset, it's our psychology. Mm -hmm. And then we move into uh, another segment, which is winning strategies. So once we get the psychology, and it has to be first, right? Those four things have to come first for everything else to follow. Otherwise, we're not going to get the result we're looking for. So the other three things that come are winning strategies. And I'll just name them, okay. uh, you know, because we don't have time to go into them. And that's planning, process, and priority. Those are the things that are going to help us get control and set uh, our strategies in the right direction. So planning, and, process, and priorities. That's right. And so the last segment is sustainable results because we don't just want to blip up and then go back down. We want to be able to maintain that, right? And so that's Absolutely. in the sustainable results part. And there's three things that are part of that, and that is um, it's, it's progress, so it's measurement, and it's proactivity. So those three okay. things are going to go into making that the rest of building on top of that to create that stability. Excellent. So there's a lot here to to right. dig into, but I do like how you group them. That makes it a little easier for my brain to absorb them and uh, you know and and pull them all together. But yeah, this is very cool. And so if I can really get all ten of these kind of humming along, this is like a, a large vehicle. It's a ten-cylinder engine uh, uh -huh. that's that's kind of humming in sync. I'm going to be in what you're calling this productivity zone and have a lot more of those days where I feel like I've just gotten a ton of things done, right? Absolutely. But the thing is, is there's not like one single point in the zone. It's not like you got to be a ten at all of these items because then that, right. that sounds stressful. In itself. They're, all, they're all on a continuum, right, from from day to day, moment to moment. Right. Well, the, the key thing is is that if you're working on any of those, you're, it's going to help you to get back into the zone. So it gives you more flexibility. And you'll be able to assess yourself, you know, through, you know, I, I do have an assessment that enables you to actually, you know, get a picture of where you are now so that you can focus on the ones that maybe you're, you know, you, you might be great in planning, like your negative self-talk is really something that needs to be worked on. So right. you know specifically where you need to work 
And that's a, a real benefit because if you don't know where you are now and where you're falling short, then you know, then you're really not able to close right. the gap. Right, you can't figure out where to really put your focus uh, if you're trying to improve on these things. Right. So that makes perfect. I'm a big fan of assessments. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll get to uh, where people can tap into your assessment uh, in just a minute. But before we do that, let's then talk about uh, the, the time wasters. Uh, so what are the the three time wasters you're talking about that really keep me from being focused on the goal? Okay, so wait, there's there's a lot of time wasters, but we'll, we'll give you the three top ones. <laughs> the, the big three. Time. <laughs> the big three. Well, the first one we talked about, negative self-talk, is really a huge thing that holds people back. Mm -hmm. and so I call it, it's the excuses, right? How many times do people spend so much time talking about why they can't do something? Oh, I don't have the time. And they go into like this elaborate excuse where, you know, they would have already been able to get started or create a little plan about how to do it or find someone else to do it in that time. So it's really we get so caught up in our stories and our excuses, and those are one of the biggest time wasters that most people don't even think about. And, and you know what people say all the time is, well, it's not an excuse. There's a reason. And somebody once told me, that's just the polite word for an excuse. You know, we all have reasons, and, uh, you know, just substitute reason with excuse, and uh, let's, let's deal with it, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So beyond the excuses, what comes next? Well, you know, we've got this, uh, we went to this open environment where people have access to us all the time, right? Mm. Whether it's so in an true. office space, right. in an office space, they've gotten rid of offices and everybody has, you know, these, these cubicles or it's an open space um, or we have accessibility with uh, text messaging and so forth. So one of the biggest challenges is the got a minute meeting, okay? <laughs> So let's let's face it, right? I dread those meetings. You know, hey Penny, got a minute? It's not generally a minute, is it? Right. That's the killer part, right? And and you know, and you've probably heard of the studies that it takes. Um, time management experts have shown that it takes about twenty minutes to get back into Just doing whatever get, it is right. that you're doing. Absolutely. Get right back on track. It's not like that. Now you got to kind of reboot. You know. Right. So if we're not in control of our environment. We're really spending, we're really wasting a lot of our time through those got a minute meetings. Excellent. Okay. And uh, what's our third biggest time waster? And the third thing, and, and this is funny because we all know it. So many studies have been out there uh, that tell us that multitasking, right, is is something that is really right. wasting our time because it's diminishing our focus, and it's really. I think I heard somewhere that it was in comparison to uh, your productivity was about the same as smoking marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, whatever. You know, I know that there's a saying that, uh, that only women can multitask, and no offense, I just, that's what I've read. Uh, but it's, not, it's, it's really not true that when we're multitasking and we're not really focusing our attention and our priority on what we're looking to achieve, we are uh, somewhat, you know, growing certain pieces of, of time and energy away. Uh, absolutely, and neur neuroscience has really now shown that really there is no such thing as a living human being who is a multitasker. You know, there is a degrading of what you're doing on any of those tasks when you have two instead of one. Uh, we just Some people are just better able at switching quickly. You know, but really, they they are not really multitasking any more than your computer really can. I mean, your everything starts to slow down the more programs we got running, right? So, right, absolutely, uh, absolutely, right. And even think about it. Some people think over little things like you know, talking on the phone and folding laundry or something like that, and that might be fine. And if you're having a more intimate conversation and you really want to connect with someone. You're not 100% focused, and they can feel that the energy. Uh, I have not verified this one, but it's it's just too good a quote that uh, that somebody had, which is that you know because of all this technology and multitasking, that our the human attention span has been measured to be slightly less than that of a goldfish. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Then again, what has a goldfish got to focus on all that much in in there? Well, Penny, this has been great. I mean, this is uh, there's a wealth of information, obviously, here. We are barely scratching the surface. That much is clear. You know, maybe you should write a book. Oh, I, I guess you have. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. What so, should I call it, Mark? That's right. So let me let me wrap it up, and I'll tell people what you what you've called it here. So we've been talking with Penny Zanker, who is obviously a productivity. Uh, 
time management expert, even though we don't like that, is she's going to help you manage your energy. We've been talking about the productivity zone and how you get in it and stay in it. We've covered the fact that it ain't about time management, it's about energy management. We've hit 10 core drivers that will get you into that productivity zone, and we've talked about three of you know huge time wasters that are preventing you from being more productive. So, Penny, it's been great having you. I know that you have a great website. Uh, you know, people can go to P as in Paul, 10, the numeral, app as in app dot com. And we got it up on screen, so I don't know why I'm saying it out, you know, uh, letter by letter here. But maybe you're just listening. You know, you're multitasking and you're not really reading the screen. Shame on you. And I know that you have written a book, right? And you have called it The Productivity Zone, Stop the Tug of War with Time. Did I get that right? That's right. Shameless plug. There you go. Shameless plug. So get on over to Penny's website, p10app.com. Check out the book. Uh, you know, clearly you need to get in touch with Penny directly where she can uh, talk to you about how this gets customized to your personal circumstances. I know you do coaching, consulting, speaking, book writing. Did I miss anything? <laughs> <laughs> but not all at the same time. <laughs> not all at the same time. She does not believe in multitasking like that. So uh, get in touch with Penny, p10app.com. Penny, it's been great having you on the show. Uh, look forward to talking to you again real soon. Thank you. It's been great being here. Thank you so much. And another great Expert Showcase episode. Chris, what should people do right now? Yeah, if you're watching this and you're a coach or consultant, imagine what it would do for you and your business if you were a guest on Experts Showcase. And here's the best part. Other than, other than possibly increasing your business, an appearance on Experts Showcase is free. We give you a copy of your episode so you can use as marketing collateral, and we give you a, a coaching session to go along with it to, to tell you how you can best market your episode and other tips and tricks about your, your business. So what you want to do is head on over to expertshowcase.com, click on the big yellow apply button, and apply to be our next featured guest on the Expert Showcase. Now if you're a coach or consultant and you've already imagined what having your own internet talk show will do for you, then we want you to head to videocontent.agency and check us out, check our packages out, and get in contact with us. Let's see if we're a good fit, and let's see if we're the ones to produce you and make you the next star and have your own internet talk show. And until next time, uh, Mark, anything else? I couldn't have said it any better, so uh, just do what he said.